Good evening, delegates and participants. Thank you for joining Shield Connect. Today we are uh, with the topic vaginal microbiome and ART, and the topic is going to be present by Dr. Sanju Smita Tripathi. So before we start with the session, let me give a quick introduction of our page Shield Connect. So just recently we have changed our uh, page uh, beautifully by the PMT and IT team. So this is the page uh, where you can log in through shieldconnect.in. We have various sections available on this page. So if you click on uh, blog section, you will find all the blogs that are written by the eminent doctors and speakers who are connected with Shield Connect. Then we have the uh, webinar section where you can find upcoming webinars and past webinars. So totally uh, 860, uh, 867 uh, webinars we have conducted till now. So you can also go through those uh, webinars and uh, in upcoming webinars, you can just log in through your email ID. You just have to register through your email ID and you will be able to enter Shield Connect page for this webinar. Then we have our leader section where you can find uh, all the uh, doctors, eminent speakers who are connected with Shield Connect. You can find their profiles in detail. Then we have special day pages like Women's Day, Mother's Day, Hypertension Day. So you can click on any one of the page. You will find all the videos and blogs re re related to it. Then we have the awareness pages like menopause awareness, autism awareness, GDM awareness. So if you click on any one of the page, you will find all the awareness videos regarding the topic on the, those pages. So this is our uh, Shield Connect page. And now uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Sanju Smita Tripathi. Ma'am is MD in Obstetric and Gynecology. Ma'am is Senior Gynecologist, Obstetrician and Laparoscopic Surgeon in Bhubaneswar, Odisha. Ma'am is a uh, well-renowned doctor in uh, Bhubaneswar. And we are glad to have you, ma'am, on our platform for today's session. And uh, I will end over the session to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening, all. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, all. Uh, today, my topic is a, a very uh, required topic, but it is has addressed less attention. The attention towards the VVM is very less. So we should today we should go through the topic in detail, and we should uh, understand its importance. Coming to my topic. Topic is role of vaginal microbiome in assisted reproductive te technique. Coming to the introduction. The vaginal microbiome plays an important role in maintaining women's overall health. These communities play an important role in vaginal innate immunity and the inhibition of bacterial, viral, and also yeast infection. Normally, sorry to the, interrupt, ma'am. Your slides are not visible. Slides, this introduction, slide yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, share screen. Okay, Is it visible now? No, ma'am. No, no ma'am. Not visible. No. It was working before. Yes. So shall I share, ma'am? Then you share it. You must have changed in between. Yeah, it was only maybe okay. No issue, no issue. No. Okay, okay, you said it. Is it, is it visible? Yes, yeah, it's visible. Okay, but okay. Shall I start with this? Uh -huh, yes, yes. Coming to the introduction, the role of vaginal microbiome in assisted reproductive technique. The vaginal microbiome, though it have attest, uh, takes a less attention, but it is highly important in maintaining a woman's oral health. These 
community plays an important role in vaginal innate immunity and the inhibition of other bacterial viral and yeast infections the urogenital site contributes 9% of the entire human microbiome whereas the gastrointestinal tract contributes almost 29% of the total human microbiome the vaginal microbiome is dynamic and changes throughout the woman's lifetime that means according to different age according to different exposure of endogenous and exogenous hormones these microbes gets changed and the community mainly dominated by the lactobacillus species next slide it's not visible to me in bold it's not visible to me excuse me yeah then coming to the introduction of these microbes the vaginal health as i have already told is influentially significant to human reproduction and public health though it is attracted a very less attention this microbiome is an intricate and dynamic micro ecosystem that constantly undergoes fluctuation during the female menstrual cycle and the woman's entire life due to the exposure of different hormones and their uh, the relations to the vaginal mucosa the vagina harbors a huge micro ecosystem containing billions of microbes as we have seen from different data almost 10 to the power 10 to 10 to the power 11 number of bacteria the female uh, woman harbors in their vagina but these endogenous en environment and the microorganism and the genomes jointly compose the entire habitat also known as the vaginal microbiome of which lactobacillus is the major species next slide then how the homeostasis of the microbiome is maintained in the ecosystem a homeostatic and mutualistic relationship exists between the microbiota and the human host the host the human provides a humid nutritious and a warm habitat for the microbes whereas the resident microbiota produces antimicrobial and anti inflammatory factors this human host gives them the substrate that is the glycogen and uh, uh, and the bacillus this lactobacillus grows along with it and they provide a antimicrobial and anti inflammatory factors thus the first line of defense against the non indigenous microorganism is established by this homeostasis mechanism next slide there is a balance between the good bacteria and harmful bacteria and so the homeostasis is maintained next there are different groups there are almost five groups and lactobacillus plays an important role and these are almost four groups group 1 2 3 and 5 are from the lactobacillus group and the group 4 is of other non lactobacillus group and among the lactobacillus mainly the crispatus and the lactobacillus inus in measures counts and the group 4 is non lactobacillus dominated and these are the gardnerella and the protovella and atopovium species next what happens during a reproductive years during reproductive years due to the high circulating levels of estrogen and progesterone this lactobacillus predominantly dominate the vaginal microbiome due to the effect of estrogen there occurs deposition of glycogen in the vaginal epithelium and the progesterone that supports the cytolysis of the epithelial cell releasing the glycogen which gets metabolized and uh, there occurs release of lactic acid from this glycogen which i will come later on how it happens this lactic acid maintains the vaginal ph to be 4 or less than 4.5 next this we can see how the microorganisms are present not only in the vagina but also in the upper female reproductive tract also in the child Uh, as group in that uh, lesser as group where puberty has not established due to the lesser effect of estrogen the e coli and other anaerobes anerob predominates in the vaginal flora but lactobacillus colonization starts at the puberty due to the effect of estrogen which again decreases 
after menopause. These enteric and anaerobic bacteria are co-dominants in postmenopausal age group. And these lactobacillus maintain the vaginal pH almost 4.7, whereas the cervical pH is almost 7 and, and the uterine pH is 7.1. These lactobacillus, these organisms also, they affect the upper reproductive systems. Next. So coming to our main topic, how the ART is affected by this vaginal microbiome. The female reproductive tract has an active microbiome and it is suggested that these microbes could influence the outcome of assisted reproductive testing and we'll see how it influences. Many studies found an AVM, abnormal vaginal microbiome and giving a negative effect on assisted reproductive technique. An abnormal vaginal microbiota has been associated with a poor reproductive outcome, giving either an implantation failure or a IVF failure. There is maybe a spontaneous abortion in patient undergoing IVF. Studies confirm this. These vaginal microbiota rich in lactobacillus without bacterial vaginosis have a very good positive outcome in ART. And if these patients have less lactobacilli and affected by the bacterial vaginosis, maybe the um, symptomatic or asymptomatic, the outcome of ART becomes poor. Next. So the vaginal microbiota in pregnancy, what happens in pregnancy? The vaginal microbiota in pregnancy, as the vagina is less rich and less diverse as compared to non-pregnant vagina with the predominance of lactobacillus species, with the higher, effect, higher level of estrogen. Significant higher stability of vaginal microbiota in early stages of pregnancy and the same increase with gestational age. The etiology including estrogen increasing the thickness of vaginal mucosa. I have already told there occurs deposition of glycogen due to the effect of estrogen and increasing the glycogen deposition. This glycogen deposition becomes a chemotactic agent or the substrate for the microbes and which is broken to glucose then fermented to lactic acid by the effect of an enzyme, I'll come later on, which plays a role in lowering the vaginal pH, giving its protection to other microbes, protection before invading other microbes. Next. Then how, what are the factors that modify the vaginal microbes, microbiota? The different, the infection, it may affect, influence the ACE factor, the pregnancy and other factors. Coming to the age, in childhood, I have already dis discussed low estrogen, low glycogen levels, thin vaginal epithelium, low lactic vessel species, and their pH becomes more, more than 4.5, almost up to an alkaline level. In adult women, high estrogen, high glycogen level, thick vaginal epithelium, high lactobacillus species, species, giving a lower pH, so which is usually the best vaginal flora protect, protecting uh, against other microbiota. And in postmenopause, lower estrogen, lower glycogen levels, thin and disrupted vaginal epithelium due to lesser estrogen, giving rise to more chances of infection and high pH. What happens in pregnancy? In pregnancy, there occurs lower concentration of mycoplasma in urethropathma, and there occurs also due to high effect of estrogen decrease in pH, increase in vaginal secretion. Any, if there is occurs any infection like aerobic infection or bacterial vaginosis, the lactobacillus microflora gets distorted. The, so the pH gets distorted. pH becomes alkaline, 6 to 8. Become, it pH, vaginal pH becomes 6 to 8. There occurs alloys discharge. And the main organism for responsible for this are Staph aureus and E. coli, which are the main prevalent organism. And what happens in bacterial vaginosis? This, there occurs also the lactobacillus microflora gets distorted pH more than 4.5, but there occurs a homogeneous white gray discharge. I'll, I'll come to the criteria, the AMSELS criteria, which we can diagnose by bacterial vaginosis out of it. There occurs inflammatory changes also, and the organism responsible are the granularella vaginalis, mobilinca species are the main prevalent organism. And the other factors that modify the vaginal flora, the ethnic group, usually the African have more vaginal pH compared to a Dutch group. And also smoking affects the estrogen, lowering the estrogen, making more uh, vaginal pH becomes alkaline and more prone for infections. And also in cancers, 
depletion of lactobacillus species occurs for the diversity, high diversity of microorganisms. Next slide, please. The altered vaginal microbiota usually leads to urogenital problem. What are the infection? The vulvovaginal candidiasis, bacterial vaginosis, urinary tract infection, and also pelvic inflammatory disease, which later on may lead to infertility, tubal factor. The infertility mainly due to the tubal factor. Next slide, please. Then the what is the main inhabited? Main inhabited uh, the vaginal microbiota is responsible for maintaining the pH, that is the lactobacillus. As I have already told, this it gives a defense against the pathogen colonization, such as Trichomonas vaginalis, Candida species, and Gardnerella, by producing lactic acids and also hydrogen peroxide and some bacteriocins and modulating the non-specific host immune response. This, these uh, bacilli can survive under low gastric pH, bile salts, and they can pass through the intestine without any harm to them, and also ascend without functional intervention to the host into the vagina. Next. Then what are the different outcome when the lactobacillus gets distorted? When the lactobacillus dominant microbiota we see before doing an ART procedure, if lactobacillus is dominating and there is no bacterial vaginosis, then the outcome is very good. When the lactobacillus is distorted and uh, the high ambulance of other groups like abundance of other groups like enterococci or other streptostaph bacteria or other gram-negative bacteria, then the implant IVF outcome gets poor. There may be implantation failure. There may be increased number of miscarriages. There may be uh, uh, preterm delivery. There may be pregnancy rate becomes reduced due to the low abundance of lactobacillus and the high concentration of all other microbiota. Next. So how the urogenital colonization occurs by the other microbiota, they may come through blood, there may be hematogenous spread, or they may come through ascension through the vagina during any ART procedure when we are doing any uh, uh, transfer, ET transfer, other things, or uh, there may be retrograde spread through fallopian tubes. And uh, uh, the, the three men, the hematogenous through ascension through vagina, or there may be retrograde spread. They, this colonization occurs. Next. So this slide we can see the gram positive lactobacillus thin rod separate structures seen with slide A and in slide B we can see bacterial vaginosis. As I've already told the Amsel's criteria in lactobacillus dominated microbe we'll see gram positive rod separate bacteria pH is less than 4, usually less than 4.5 and there is high lactate concentration. But in bacterial vaginosis we'll see others uh, usually asymptomatic may be overgrowth of gram negative bacteria a uh, species like Gardnerella and Prebotella atopobium, these species giving a, the criteria, the Amsel's criteria, thin homogeneous odor, vaginal secretion, maybe white is a grays, pH more than 4.5, and there are presence of closures, exfoliated epithelial cells, gives rise to diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis. Next slide. Ethnicity, I have already discussed. There is African background, uh, there is a prevalent in communities of more bacterial vaginosis in African background compared to DOS background. Geneticity, intravaginal practice of other co founders, it's also there. Next slide. So, how this vaginal bacteria play a role of pro and anti inflammatory effect? These artopubium they invoke the innate immune response in cervical, cervical vaginal tissue cultures. There occurs the lactic acid, D and L lactic acid production, which lowers the vaginal pH and preventing production of inflammatory mediators like interleukin-6, 8, and other things. And also activated mucosal CD4 T cells numbers are elevated in women with high-risk bacteria. These cells are gets elevated. By this, by reducing the vaginal pH, they give a protection. Next. This lactobacillus dominance and low vaginal pH is unique to human, human so far, as you have seen the other, uh, in other race groups, it's not seen. It's only unique to human. This lactic acid and low pH creates a strong antimicrobial environment 
permissive of lactobacillus colonization only but in other group it's not seen next slide so the high of the glycosam gets converted to lactic acids this uh, lactic acid level is uh, this uh, lactobacillus is low in macris and postmenopausal women and in women with bacterial vaginosis these vaginal lactobacillus use the glycosam to produce lacto lactic acid not directly though this uh, there occurs a presence of human alpha amylase in the lower genital tract mucosal fluid which processes the glycosam to support the vaginal colonization of this bacteria and by that they reduce the glycosam to lactic acid giving rise to a acidic ph next there is different analysis which shows that this bacterial vaginosis is prevalent in almost 19% of all infertile population may be asymptomatic in 50% cases and if there is a link of this bacterial vaginosis there may occur preterm birth post surgical infection and female infertility impact may be negative by this organisms by this infections then what is the effect of art on vaginal microbiota we discussed the effect of vaginal microbiome on art and how the art influences these microbiome the circulating hormones impact greatly upon the vaginal microbiome by the influencing the estrogen level they, they by making the estrogen lower by giving certain drugs like gnrh and log all and giving a continuous negative uh, feedback we can give is we can produce a susceptible environment for the woman to infection then exogenous hormones also impact on the vaginal environment and also composition of the vaginal microbiome next four months of generous antagonist treatment increases the vaginal ph significantly above 4.5 and also we have seen in endometriosis by uh, uh, this drug can give a significant shift towards intermediate vaginal microflora so decreasing increasing the chances of infection there may be decrease in normal vaginal microflora in control group also non significant shifts towards the decrease in normal vaginal microflora significantly higher colonization of gardnerella e coli and after giving a application of the antibiotic levofloxacin there may be reduce the growth of cultured e coli next so coming to the effects of art on vaginal microbiota i have discussed in significantly higher cpr in the group with no microbial growth compared with the group whose culture were positive for microbial colonization if the culture is positive the effect uh, the, the result is poor next in similarly lower cpr ongoing pregnancy rates and implantation rates in group with positive cervical culture L lower cpr ongoing pregnancy rates and also implantation rates in positive cervical culture next and how the art affects during ovulation also on vaginal microbiome circulating hormones impacts greatly upon vaginal microbiome during ovulation also susceptibility of the woman to infection due to the higher stimulus drugs also next due to ovarian stimulation as we see there is a, uh, there occurs a shift of the vaginal microbiome in some but not all novel bacterial strains found in 33% of women screened during the treatment cycle next so how the down regulation as i have already discussed with generous analogs how it uh, uh, changes the vaginal microbiome exogenous hormones impact upon the vaginal environment and the composition of vaginal microbiota after giving four months treatment as i have already discussed by four months of giving generous analog there occurs increased vaginal ph significantly above 4.5 in endometriosis also shift towards the intermediate vaginal microflora decrease in normal vaginal microflora predisposing to more chances of infection next so vaginal microbiota on the day of et or embryo transfer we should see the first before giving embryo transfer we should keep the keep in mind what is the vaginal microbiota status as it affects the pregnancy outcome and also ongoing pregnancy was characterized by tubs in a some fraction 
by these lactobacillus species were the top species. If the amount of lactobacillus species is high and there is less vitrogenesis, then the pregnancy success rate is high in assisted reproductive technique. And we should take a great care to reduce the risk of microbial transfer during the transfer of embryo. We should clean the external os of the cervix with culture medium. And also we should avoid touching the catheter tip of the catheter to the vaginal wall or external cervix while doing a embryo transfer. Next. T well infertility. There also we have seen abnormal micro vaginal microbiome as, as in bacterial vaginosis, I have already discussed, associated with T-well factor infertility, mainly the chlamydia, which are more prevalent in bacterial vaginosis positive women. And components of abnormal micro vaginal microbiota ascend through the cervix into the upper genital tract, giving rise to pelvic inflammatory disease and reducing the fertility by affecting the fallopian tube, keeping it, making it less patent and less potent, giving rise to one cause of major cause of infertility. Next. In patients undergoing fertility treatment, we should more we should more uh, focus on the vaginal microbiota to rule out if there is any bacterial vaginosis or any abnormal lower genital tract microbiota was significantly more common if compared to general population. So one in five infertile patients usually have bacterial vaginosis, and one in three having a disturbed vaginal microbiota. So, bacterial does not affect on conception rate, though we should be careful to rule out, to cure this before going for further treatment of assisted reproductive technique. Next. In particular, patients undergoing IVF, there occurs a uh, the assess the prevalence of bacterial vaginosis by this news and score and PCR and also AMSELS criteria I have already discussed. The implantation rate was reduced in those women who were bacterial vaginosis positive compared to negative. Almost if we treat them 50%, we will get the chances success rate is 50%. If we untreat it, it becomes almost half 25%. Difference was not satisfactorily significant. Next. So effects of ART on vaginal microbiota. Contamination is possible from vaginal cervical microorganism by needle puncture of the vagina. This microorganism that enter the endometrium from the cervix during embryo transfer could damage the developing embryo and prevent pregnancy. So we should be careful while doing a embryo transfer. Next. What is the pathophysiology of vaginal imbalance in female infertility? What, what happens if there is there is an imbalance. There occurs increased concentration of interleukin beta in vaginal environment, producing ROS, triggering the generation of reactive oxygen spaces, which affects the membrane integrity and flexibility. By and it also impairs the tail motion of the sperm, and also the sperm oocyte fusion gets affected, leading to decrease disruption of the fertilization and implantation. And how we can prevent or at least take a, uh, we can cure this by giving probiotics and prebiotics. What are the probiotics? These are the hallmark of a healthy vaginal microbiota in most women. Relative these are the relative abundance of the lactobacillus species. Next, coming to the definition. Uh, do you miss a slide? I think. No, next. Okay. Okay. Then, what are the uh, outcomes of disrupted vaginal microbiome? Conception to birth. We'll see in the upper part there is a case of normal vaginal microbiome giving a reduced pH, reduction in vaginal pH, and protection against the pathogen by these lactic acids. The adhesion of pathogen gets blocked and supportive environment is produced for fertilization and implantation. Pregnancy outcome is better, lesser antimicrobial compounds production, so lesser chances of infection. But if gets disrupted, the vaginal microbiome gets disrupted by any type of infection by PID, giving rise to PID, cervicitis, or sexually transmitted disease, there occurs a pro-inflammatory cytokines 
affecting the sperm motility tell motility is affecting the fusion of sperms to oocytes there occurs less chances of implantation and also the uh, if a pregnancy gets a pregnancy occurs there are chances of uh, other infection like amniotic fluid infection choriamnitis leg miscarriage may be there may be chances of premature rupture of membrane with preterm birth and after all neonatal infection chances is also there next so looking to the future a healthy vaginal microbiota can help to prevent urogenital conditions such as urinary tract infection or bacterial vaginosis therefore studies leading to a better understanding of the bmb which till now has got lesser attention we should focus on it and we should facilitate the discovery of improved treatments and diagnostics for such conditions next these are all studies the same inference next so what are the probiotics these are the probiotics containing lactobacillus they can be used for a longer period these are the alternative to antibiotics usually within the context of high infection recurrence rates we can use them next so coming to the definition what are the probiotics probiotics are live microorganisms which when administered in adequate amounts confer a health benefit to the host so these are the live microorganisms but these are healthy for the host and what are the characteristic to be a potential probiotic they should be acid and bile stable they should be of human origin it should produce antimicrobial substance they should adhere to the human intestinal cells and they should persist in the human intestinal tract clinically documented health effect they should have a clinically documented health effect they should have a antagonistic against the enteric pathogens they should be susceptible to antibiotic if you are in number they should be susceptible to antibiotic and they should be safety in all food and clinical use these are the characteristic of a potential probiotics next and what are the prebiotics these are the food they are compounds of food that induce the growth or activity of beneficial microorganisms and when prebiotic probiotic they administered togetherly they give a symbiotic effect then what are the prebiotic what are the characteristic of a prebiotic they suppress the, the what are the effect they suppress the reproduction in the intestines of pathogenic bacteria they stimulate the peristalsis they improve the work of the digestive system they stimulate the growth and reproduction of only useful microflora they maintain an optimal ph in the intestine they stimulate the local immunity and also remove excess mucus from the walls of the small intestine so when this pre and pro they are uh, they are given synergistically they give a symbiotic effect next so these are the vaginal microbiome predictor for in vitro fertilization without or with excited outcome uh, next next slide result is vaginal microbiome using the is pro technique enables stratification of the chances of becoming pregnant prior to the start of an ivf or ivf ex treatment next previous slide please we should keep in awareness of the vaginal microbiota which enable couples to make a more balanced decision regarding timing and continuation of their ivf or ivf ex treatment cycle we should rule out the bacterial vaginosis or other infection and we should see the Uh, abundance of lactobacillus species species before deciding for the treatment of ert and we should accordingly counsel the couple next so the coming to and these are different studies this is a uh, infectious uh, disease society of america it's a study they conclude that our results strengthen the potential role of lactobacillus in promoting a favorable environment for pregnancy and suggest that microbiome characterization could be useful together with standard clinical and laboratory assessments in pre iui evaluation of infertile couples next abnormal vaginal microbiota may be associated with poor reproductive outcome we have already discussed and there is a wider implication of the finding abnormal vaginal microbiota may negatively affect the clinical pregnancy rate in iui patients avm which it with uh, Name it as AVM. It may have a negative effect. If a negative correlation between abnormal 
AVM and the clinical pregnancy rate is corroborated. Corroborated patients could be screened and subsequently treated for AVM first prior to going for infertility or ART treatment. These are the different studies. Next, there are different meta analysis which demonstrate that bacterial vaginosis is significantly more prevalent in women with infertility. As I have already told, almost 30 to 40 percent we see in, out of five, one is. Uh, bacterial vaginosis is positive in patients undergoing infertility treatment. Women with tubal factor had significantly higher prevalence of bacterial vaginosis compared with women with other causes of infertility. 40% of patients undergoing ART have bacterial vaginosis. Next. Then lactobacillus and implantation. How it helps in ART. The normal flora of the reproductive tract includes a variety of lactobacillus species which promotes a healthy supportive environment for the embryo in the pre and periconceptual periods. This provides a safe environment for implantation and also it comprises 90 to 95% of the total bacteria that count in the reproductive tract. As we have already told, five groups out of it, one to five, uh, one, two, three, and five are lactobacillus, four is non lactobacillus group, which four species showing numerical dominance, mainly the Crispatus, lactobacillus inus, lactobacillus genseni and also gasserine. Two main attributes of lactobacilli have been shown to play a pivotal role in shifting the balance of the reproductive tract environment in favor of successful implantation and pregnancy. They produce lactic acid, which lowers the vaginal pH, makes an unfavorable habitat for other pathogens, including bacterial vaginosis. Live birth rate has been directly correlated with the recovery of hydrogen peroxide production by this lactobacillus from the embryo transfer catheter tip. If you see, the diverse rate is directly correlated with the presence of lactobacillus species and inversely correlated with the bacterial vaginosis. Next. These are the different cellular physiology. Next. So, these are different types of discussions uh, we have already discussed. Next. So the vaginal microbiome as a tool to predict IVF success. Vaginal composition prior to the start of hormonal treatment for ART seems to be predictive of in vitro fertilization or in vitro fertilization ICSI outcome with mainly a highly negative predictive value. The local microbiota, especially the absence or presence of specific microbes within parts of the female reproductive tract seems to be associated with the outcome of assisted reproductive technique. Next. So we have already discussed this. Conclusion is vaginal microbiome can influence the result of ART. These are the different different studies. The profiles dominated by lactobacillus were associated with the achievement of pregnancy. And there was a relationship between the stability of the vaginal microbiome and the achievement of pregnancy. Next. Evidence, these are the different endometrial microbiome has an effect on implantation and success also and the failure rate also. The presence of non lactobacillus dominant microbiota has a negative effect. The receptive endometrium becomes receptivity of the endometrium becomes less with associated with decreased implantation. So, this result demonstrated that the existence of an endometrial microbiota are highly susceptible during the acquisition of endometrial receptivity. Pathological modification of its profile is associated with poor reproductive outcome if, if for in vitro fertilization patients. This add a novel microbiological dimension to the reproductive process. Next. So treatment of bacterial vaginosis should proceed before going for ART. And also it improves the ART success rates. As I've already discussed, treatment double the pregnancy rate if you treat the bacterial vaginosis patients. Non-treated, it is almost 24%. If treated, it is almost 49%. The success rate. Next. Thank you. Thank you for your present hearing. Thank you, Sil people, for giving me this opportunity to talk on the highly yes, influential topic, but uh, less discussed, uh, less attended. Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so let me see if you have any queries from the uh, delegate section. So, ma'am, uh, I received uh, two questions. The first question is that uh, how much important is to do microbiome profiling uh, before going for IVF treatment? 
yes it's important as it influences the outcome so it's very hmm. important because almost out of five in infertile yes. female we see vitreal resonances present out of one in out of five so we should mm -hmm. evaluate it first we should rule out the presence of vitreal resonances so different criteria as i have already discussed we should mm -hmm. we should take the vaginal ph mm -hmm. before uh, taking a patient to art mm -hmm. these are the amsels criteria i have already discussed we should ask we should take a history proper history about any uh, abnormal vaginal discharge if it is there we should do a ph vaginal ph test and we should treat it before before undergoing art procedure okay. then the second question is like uh, can be probiotics helpful in uh, condition like chronic endometriosis which is also one of the uh, responsible uh, condition for poor pregnancy outcome uh, it is not directly responsible in endometriosis <laughs> there are cause a vaginal flora imbalance that we uh, it's just imbalance shift from the normal side so it is uh, as these factors are uh, not harmful to human body we can indirectly give a treatment of this one means it has not a direct influence but it has a supportive influence by maintaining the vaginal flora to a normal state um, we receive one more question can we consider a probiotic helpful in vaginal tuberculosis or genital tuberculosis in usually tuberculosis is a immune compromised disease Yeah. and uh, it, it also it will also influence the vaginal microbiome so mm -hmm. we can give probiotics also properly they we can give okay and thank you for giving all the answers to this questions and we are glad to have you on our platform for uh, today's webinar thank and you, uh, i also thank the delegates for joining today's session thank you so much so saidi you can uh, stop the live so